Kentucky. Thank you all for coming out. We're excited to be here. Uh, we've got a good announcement, and um, I have with me, we have our um, Secretary of the Lottery, John Davis, who's actually uh, grew up around Lake Okeechobee, uh, serving with us in Tallahassee. Uh, we've got the mayor uh, of the city of Moorhaven, Brett Whitten. We have city council members, and we have Glades uh, County Commission members. So I want to thank you all uh, for being here. Well, we got a good announcement today in terms of helping with some infrastructure. Uh, we also are, um, you know, very pleased to see a lot of the success that Florida's had. Uh, we're proud to be a free state here in Florida, and it's very important. <laughs> You know, if you look at what Florida was able to do, you know, not just by, you know, being open, protecting people's jobs over the last couple of years, businesses, making sure kids were in school. Uh, we face huge opposition through all of that. Uh, but the fact that we were strong, not only on that, but on banning vaccine passports, not firing people for not being vet for the vet protecting the jobs, fighting back on Biden's mandates, all these different things. Had we not done that in Florida, you know, maybe the, a lot of our other states would not have followed suit. You know, our country could look like Canada if we didn't stand up uh, and lead. And you see what's going on in Canada, Australia, New Zealand, some of these countries. You know, it's been a total disaster over the last two years. And so it just shows you uh, freedom is not something to take for granted. You know, we think we act like, oh, we're Americans. Again. But the bottom line is you got to fight for it. you got to be willing to stand for it. And that's what we've done in the state of Florida. And the result is we have the biggest budget surplus in the history of the state. We had more tourists, domestic visitors in 2021 than in the history of the state, way more than even pre-COVID people are going. You know why they come to Florida? Because they know if they go to some of these other places, they got to show medical papers to get a hamburger or they're going to be restricted or forced to wear a mask or whatever. And in Florida, you can come and make your own decisions. You know, you want to do that, fine. You don't, fine. You're going to be respected. And so uh, uh, that's the reason why we've really boomed, because people know they can come and be in a free, uh, free, uh, free state. We have 61 percent increase in new businesses forming in Florida just since I became governor in 2019. I mean, that's a really big deal. And what we're doing with our support for rural communities, but in other communities, we're doing a lot on infrastructure, but we're also doing a lot on workforce education. You know, they used to always say that the only way you could be successful is to go to a four-year university. And look, we are very proud of what we've done in Florida. We don't let them raise tuition. So you can go and actually afford to go to our state universities. There are systems ranked number one. It's ranked very high by U.S. News and World Report. We're proud of that, and that's good for a lot of people. But, you know, you got a lot of students over the last generation. They go $100,000 in debt. They get a degree in zombie studies. And then they end up working in a job they could have had at a high school. Um, and so we want to tell people, okay, you know, that's one pathway, but if we provide people with uh, career education and skills and things like electrical, HVAC, welding, uh, commercial, you have huge opportunities. So what we've been doing is we've been expanding opportunities in Florida. We were actually just in, um, uh, where were we at when we did? We've done Northwest Florida. We've done Northeast Florida. Um, we did Polk. We've done a whole bunch of places where we're expanding commercial driver's license uh, training. So we have more truck drivers. You know, they're paying the truck drivers $15,000 signing bonuses to sign up as truck drivers now. So we're doing that. And, you know, you look at what's happening with the inflation, uh, with, with I call it Biden inflation, because they're printing trillions of dollars. It's causing everything to go up. But part of it is they have restrictive policies. It's hurting the supply chain. So what we said is, okay, in Florida, we're going to expand capacity at our ports. So you've actually had more ships coming in to Florida ports. We're up 10, 15 percent, bringing more goods in. They're sitting off the coast in some of these other places. They don't even work 24 hours a day. Our ports are open 24 hours. So we're doing that. But once they get here, you put on train, you put it on a truck. So we want more truck drivers to be able to do it. And so we're leading the effort on that. We're leading the effort on a lot of these other things by doing things like expand apprenticeships. 
But if you look at the inflation, everything is more expensive over the last year. Fuel is more expensive. Groceries are more expensive. Electricity, everything you get in bills is now more expensive. Um, you know, and it's a result of having, I think, really bad policies going on right now in Washington, D.C. And so Florida, we're really showing, I think, how it, how it can work well. Um, and we're going to continue doing that. And we're going to do what we can to fight back um, against the inflationary policies that we see in Washington, D.C. Uh, today, we're here to build off some of the success we've had with terms of job training and infrastructure. So one of the things we're able to do is under my leadership, uh, we have a fund, infrastructure fund for rural communities. And the way I view it is, is I love doing it with rural communities because, you know, I can bring a, a, a significant amount of money and it goes a long way. And people really appreciate when you're looking out for them. So we've been able to do it. You know, there's some communities I can put in a lot of money and it's like they need a lot more. Uh, so we really like the rural infrastructure because I think it, it's a really good use of tax dollars. It, we get a lot of bang for the buck. So today uh, we've come, you know, when I show up, I tell people, you know, I'm usually not empty handed. I usually come with something. Sometimes it's money. Sometimes it's we'll sign a legislation. Sometimes we introduce new, new legislation, make appointments, whatever. But we usually have something that we're doing. And so today um, I have brought cash. So we're awarding over $1 million through our rural infrastructure fund for projects right here in Glades County. So. We're going to support design and construction of roadway improvements as well as stormwater drainage projects in the city of Moorhaven to help revitalize the downtown area. It will make the roadway safer for vehicles, bicycles, and pedestrian. It will also improve the drainage system to prevent flooding downtown while protecting the Caloosahatchee River from polluted water. And so by fortifying the infrastructure, uh, we can help, uh, stand up and help our residents here uh, build more opportunities and protect our overall environment. So we're really uh, happy to be able to do that. We are asking, the legislature's in session now, we've got a few more weeks left, and so a lot of this stuff with the budget is going to be landing over the next few weeks. Uh, we're seeking another $100 million for our rural infrastructure fund. So if we get that, you guys can tell me what you need, and we can come back and do even more uh, for Glades and other counties. We're seeking another $100 million for the Job Growth Grant Fund, uh, which is um, allows us to do infrastructure or workforce, and that's how we've done a lot of the commercial driver's license. We've done programs for more diesel mechanics because they fix the trucks. We've done a lot with that, so we're going to continue. We feel optimistic about that. And then $100 million for the Workforce Development Capitalization Incentive Grant. So uh, we're going to continue to lead the way here in the state of Florida. Uh, we're proud of, um, of, of all 67 counties. We're proud of the folks here. Uh, we're proud that people, more than any time since I've been uh, uh, a kid, you know, born and raised in Florida, people are more proud to be in Florida now because we really have led the way on freedom. And so we're going to continue to do that and continue to put big points on the board. So I'll present the check. Who's going to get it? Are we going to have the commissioners come? Where's the mayor? Come on over here. All right. You got the photo? Why don't you come up here and go ahead and deliver some remarks for us? Well, I'm definitely not going to try to fill the shoes of the governor talking. That was a great <laughs> speech. I agree with it. I want to thank you all for being here today. I want to thank all the elected officials that are here today, the business owners, uh, the county commissioner, the county manager, city manager. My whole staff is here. And uh, I want to thank definitely uh, the governor for, for making this happen. And I want to thank Connie Van Ash. I haven't seen her today, but she did a lot of work on this, too. So uh, thank you all very much, and thank you, Governor. Yep. All right, we have Secretary John Davis. Well, thank you, Governor, and good afternoon to everyone here. I haven't been raised on the other side of the lake. Which way is the lake there? Here. But having, right in front of me, all right. 
having been raised on the other side of the lake uh, in a small rural community of uh, Pahokee. Yes, yes, yes. I understand firsthand of the many of the hardship and the many challenges that small towns such as Moorhaven face every single day. From access to vital uh, infrastructure, resources, to high paying jobs, our rural communities are often, mis are often left behind and overlooked. But thankfully, we have a governor who recognizes these struggles and continue to work with our state legislature as well as directing DEO and others to ensure that fundings for crucial projects that create opportunities that allow all Florida's communities to be able to thrive. And I'm pleased to be here today with Governor DeSantis, and I thank him for his ongoing leadership and his commitment to the success of this great state, especially in our rural communities, as well as those communities that are underdeveloped. This governor will continue to be a champion for our state, and I look forward to seeing the bright future that lies ahead for more Haven. Thank you. Right. Thank you, Governor. John was a football player. He got recruited to play at Florida State, and he was on wide right one team, uh, one and two. So, you know, they lost uh, you know, to Miami those two years in a row. Then he graduated. Then they won the national championship the next year. So, uh, but, but, but he had a great career, and he's doing a great job, and, and we're, we're really happy. And uh, so we're, we're pleased to be here. Uh, you know, my view is, is uh, you know, I've gone to different places. You know, we, uh, we, we help uh, in different parts of the state. And I've gone to places where the, no, they've never seen a governor come before. And so we want to make, we, we, we believe making it to all the communities. And so we've been able to do that, um, you know, largely. And we're going to continue to do more. So if we get the good funding, if we do all that, you know, we'll make sure that when the budget goes into effect next July, you know, maybe you'll see me again uh, with some more good news. So just tell your local officials, you know, to bug us uh, with some ways uh, with some ways that we'll be able to help. And in the meantime, we'll make sure that uh, we'll keep protecting your freedoms and keep making Florida uh, a great place to live. So thank you all for coming out today. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Great to see you guys. Appreciate it. Absolutely.